Hello, I'm John Cleland Host. If you care about our country and our world like I do, then you know that this is an important election and that it's coming up fast. But do our kids understand it? Especially, do they understand how the Electoral College works? Will they see the news that night with the map and not understand why people have these different numbers flying around? Here's a fun way to teach our kids about the Electoral College. It's an easy game. After some great family time with this game, they'll understand the Electoral College better than a lot of adults do. But what is this game all about? This game shows a very simplified way of simulating an election. The players first run their campaign in a very simplified way, and then the vote plays out with the winner-take-all nature of the Electoral College being shown. If you're not familiar with the Electoral College right now, then take a second to Google it. The basic way that the game is played is by first giving each player representing a political party an equal number of campaigning advertising credits, or just tokens. They place these in turn on each of the regions, and we have regions of um, several states each just to make things go quicker. So you can think of them like states. And they do this in turn until they've planned out the whole campaign. In other words, placed all the campaigning tokens. And then, based on the amount of campaigning that's done in each state or region, the players each use uh, dice to determine who gets that region. And then the, re the electoral college votes from each region, because it's winner take all, are simply added up to see who gets to 270 electoral college votes. You will, of course, need to make your game first. It's relatively easy. All you need is some poster board, markers, about 80 small game pieces. Beads work real well. of two different colors and two dice. Again, different colors work best, so there's none of this. No, I rolled a six. No, I rolled a six, right, you can see. And a score pad and pencil for totaling up the votes at the end. To make the game board that you'll play on, first take your piece of poster board and put on it an outline of the United States as shown here. You can get these online or use this one or whatever. Now remember, we're gonna designate the regions based on their electoral college vote and we're going to group them together because if you did this by individual states the game would just take too long and the kids wouldn't have a good time especially the younger kids so you can see the electoral college numbers here and you can see that for a simple game i group them together as you as you can see here with the northeast and then the south and then other regions and i left florida and ohio as separate states just because, as we know, they're often important in current politics today, although in a number of years that won't be the case anymore and you can make the board another way. And of course, remember, as you make this, whatever system of regions and states that you use, they need to total 538 Electoral College votes. You can make them with the... Um, with it possible to have a 269-269 split, or like this one where you can't, where someone's gonna win no matter what. Okay, let's play the game. It's a two-player game, so let each player pick a name for their political party. It helps to have one that has the color of their piece in the name, like the Green Train Party or something like that. Remember, we're gonna do this in two stages. First stage. Allow them to place their campaign advertisement credits, or just ads. I find it works well to start with about 40 total that each player gets. Make sure they start with an equal number so that it's fair. And allow them to take turns putting two ads per turn wherever they want on the board. This is just like Risk, where you put two armies at a time, and we do it in turn so that the person who plays last doesn't have an advantage of putting all their armies someplace and surprising someone, or in this case, all of their campaign ads. So it also helps, I found, to um, reduce that to just one per turn for the last 10 or so, just because even the last two can be a surprise. 
All right, does that make sense? Maybe, maybe not. Why don't we look at a quick example game so you can see how this plays out. Here you can see the players planning out their campaign. In other words, placing campaign advertising tokens in the various regions. It's also interesting to see how quickly our kids figure out some of the basics of the strategy that we see playing out on the national stage. For instance, if a region is hopeless, right, they're often not even going to bother with it. We'll also sometimes see some regions get a whole bunch of campaign advertising tokens from both sides as they're struggling to get that area, and other areas be almost neglected. Now they've got them all placed, you can see that most regions have some campaigning by both parties there. So, who's going to get those regions? That's the second part of the game. Now we'll find that out. Again, just as before, we'll move a token from each together, and they'll roll off, where they'll roll the die and see who gets the highest roll. And the loser removes one campaign advertising token, moving another one up from the pile in that region until there's only one color left. And then that's the party that wins that area. As we move through the board, you can see them starting off at the east coast, moving to the west, resolving each area. Now that everyone's done, we just simply add up the number of electoral college votes and see who won by passing 270. And variations. You can take this game to whole new levels. You know how um, California and Texas usually go. You can add advantage regions just like that. We've done this too. Add maybe five or ten campaign advertising tokens to each one. If you don't have them be exactly the same size, you're giving someone an unfair advantage. So don't do that unless, of course, you want to. A lot of other things right here in the description. Another one you can do is multiple rounds of campaigning. When you end the game, don't end the game. Give everyone another 20 tokens to put down and resolve everything again, keeping the ones that are left over from the previous rounds and see how things go. And of course, many more variations. You want the game to fit your family or the people that are playing. Have fun.